songs before we, oh, Merry Christmas. We have a couple of songs just to sing before we get started for worship. The next song does have a chorus that's really easy. Halle, hallelujah. If you want to join us, feel free.
Well, good morning. Good morning and Merry Christmas and welcome. I welcome those of you here in the sanctuary, those online and those in the parking lot as well. I was thinking as we were driving here this morning, uh, that verse came into my mind. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And I was thinking that because, you know, we know that this particular Sunday, especially when Christmas Eve is on a Friday and you have Saturday and Sunday, that this Sunday attendance is lower. And, but then I thought, you know what? It's just so wonderful, those of us who are gathered here, and I know there are some at home as well, it is good to be in the house of the Lord and to sing his praises. So I'm so glad that you are here this morning. One announcement is that we are getting ready to welcome new members here at Zion. And so if you'd help us spread that word, or if you are interested in learning more about, even if you're a member now, but you want to learn more about how to become connected here, on Sunday, January 23rd, we will be having a gathering right after the 10.30 worship service. We'll have lunch and then uh, some information and conversation about Zion with uh, several people from staff and council and whatnot. So you're welcome to join us for that. And all of, as always, you can find out more information on zionbuffalo.org. And I just also always want to say um, how grateful and thankful I am to all of you who work behind the scenes to make worship happen. And welcome home to some of you to the worship team. And it's just wonderful, isn't it, when we get to have family and friends coming back home. But thank you all for being here this morning. Let us sing together our first song. Oh, no, 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 let's not sing yet. <laughs> Try to follow the order of the bulletin. That would be really good on my part. Let's share the peace of the Lord with one another. Christ's peace be with you, whether you want to wave or give high fives. The peace of our Lord be with you all. Good morning. So then how about if we stand and sing together? Go Tell It on the Mountain is one of our favorites, and it'll be on screen, it's in your bulletins, and you do have a chance later in the service to pick some of the favorite Christmas carols that are listed toward the back of the bulletin, so be ready for those as well. Here we go. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who sends the word with angels, who has made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace on all the earth. Amen. In Christ, we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger but slow to forgive. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace, that all we do in word or deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your good will, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. So I am wondering if any of the kids want to come forward and join me for just a little bit. If not, that's okay too, but great. And I know there's some at home as well. Hey, good morning, good morning. How are you? Remind me of your name. Wyatt. Wyatt. Okay, Wyatt, next time you're going to have to come and test me and see if I remember it, okay? Okay, okay I think I will. Thanks for coming and joining me so I'm not doing the children's sermon all by myself. <laughs> this is pretty nice. So it's interesting, the scripture that you're going to be hearing in a little bit. So, you know, just a little bit ago, of course, we had baby in the manger, Jesus in the manger. And the next thing that we hear about Jesus in the Bible, he is 12 years old. So we don't have much recorded between the time he was a baby, well, anything, until he was 12 years old. I wonder what he did in between that time. What do you think? I don't know. I think he was probably just a pretty much a normal kid, running around, playing, probably had to do chores at home. Do you have to do chores at home sometimes? Yeah. Yes, yes. So I think he did all those things that kids do as he was growing up and learning. And um, one, when he was 12 years old, he and his whole family and a, a whole bunch of people went on a trip, and we're going to hear about that in the gospel lesson. But on their way home, Mary and Joseph realized Jesus wasn't with them. Did you ever see those movies, Home Alone? Yeah, and where the parents are all of a sudden like, what was that kid's name? Gosh, I can't remember his Kevin! Kevin! Where's Kevin? <laughs> so that's what happened to Mary and Joseph. And they couldn't find Jesus. And so they started looking for them, for him. Were you ever lost as a little kid? Do you remember getting lost? No. I remember getting lost one time when I was a little kid, and I was so afraid. But you know what? I think my mom was even more afraid because she couldn't find me. So, she, you know, Mary and Joseph are looking and looking and looking for Jesus. And where in the world do you think they might have found him? You'll never guess. They, couldn't, they didn't look for him here in the first place. Where do you think they found him? In the cross. Oh, well, he, well that's a good, good answer. But he was on the cross, but that's way later. So this is just when he's a kid. They found him in the temple, which is where they would go to church. And he was talking to the rabbis which is like the pastor, and he was helping them understand all about God. And Mary and Joseph were proud of him, but they were also surprised that he knew so very much. And they were so relieved when they found him. And then they said, it's time to come back home. And so then Jesus went home, and he spent all the rest of that time with his family, and then we hear about him not until he's much, much older. 
so that helps us to know that Jesus was fully a human being, but also fully God. It's a pretty cool story, I think. So, Well, let's pray. Thanks for talking over with me. Let's pray. Dear God, you give us your son, Jesus, and it's wonderful to think about him as a little kid running and playing and learning from Mary and learning from Joseph and learning from the rabbis. And it's just amazing for us to realize that even when he knew so much, he still went home and learned more from his family and from his community. Help us to remember, Lord, that there's so much to learn about you. And so help us to keep coming here to your house and reading our Bibles and praying and learning more about you. And the people of God say together, Amen. Okay, Wyatt, how about a fist bump? Next time, ask me if I remember. Thanks, Wyatt. In a manger. As we receive the offering, we have a song called Emmanuel, Hallowed Manger Ground. If you feel free to sing it with us, we would love that. Broken by a baby's cry. 
let us pray. Gracious God, your word made flesh brings harmony to the earth. As we offer ourselves and these your gifts, prepare us to receive the grace and truth that you offer us anew each day in the song of your salvation, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, may the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsively our psalm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord of heaven and heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded, and they were created, who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. And our second reading is from Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
invite you to please stand. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find Jesus, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among his teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard it were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. Jesus said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated. My siblings, in Christ's grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Well, remembering back a couple years ago, something that kind of comes natural at this time of year, I, I think we sort of reminisce a little bit, and then pretty soon now, you know, all of the TV things and commercials and radio and all of that start turning to the year in review and looking to the new year. And I know I've said it many times and I've heard it many times in this past couple years, people saying, I just cannot wait until 2021 is over <laughs> or I just can't wait till 2020 is over. It's got to be better as we look back and reminisce uh, about things like that. Um, one of the highlights I was thinking about was several years ago, actually. Uh, but I have a cousin, Shelly, who was really like a sister to me. We were very close. We spent summers together. And when she first gave birth to her firstborn child, uh, going to the hospital, and when Shelly handed little Ellie into my arms, um, just that beautiful sense of newborns, you know, how, how much hope there is when you see a newborn and just how wonderful they are. And you don't know a thing about them really, but your heart just bursts for love of these little ones. And I was thinking about that and thinking about how much time we spend thinking about the baby Jesus. And then there is this huge gap in anything recorded about his life. In fact, this story about Jesus as 12 years old is only recorded in Luke's gospel. And it is the only thing that we have written about Jesus in those growing up years. The baby comes to us, God vulnerable. God the almighty powerful comes as a baby. But on this Sunday, especially when Christmas Eve is on a Friday, and it just feels like we come so quickly to this story of Jesus as a 12-year-old, and we are just kind of, I think, almost abruptly put into the reality of life after Jesus as a baby and life after Christmas. So Mary and Joseph as you know, go each year to the feast of the Passover. They go to Jerusalem. And Jesus is with them on his 12th year. And as you know the story, 
Jesus is seemingly lost. And we might wonder how that happens for Mary and Joseph, especially in our day and age when kids are not hardly let out of arm's reach. But for Jesus and Mary and Joseph and those who are traveling up to Jerusalem, it would not have been unusual for the kids to kind of travel together with some of the relatives and the other relatives back traveling together. It was just a big group of people who traveled together. So it wouldn't have been really that unusual for Mary and Joseph to think, well, Jesus is with Mary or Jesus is with Joseph or, or whatnot and not to be too worried about him. But when they came to camp that night and realized that he wasn't with them, of course they're frantic and want to find him and so you can just imagine them going and saying have you seen our son have you seen jesus have you seen him and they decide immediately to go back now they've traveled a day's worth of travel and they are going to go back to jerusalem but something else that we don't understand because we take travel pretty much well probably not as much for granted nowadays as we had two years before i think travel has become much more difficult but We do feel fairly safe when we're traveling, but for Mary and Joseph, traveling in those days is a very dangerous thing, and that's why they mostly traveled in large groups, because it was not safe to travel. Uh, You would not know who you might meet along the road. And they still, of course, with the heart of a parent, they still went to Jerusalem and searched for him and looked for him and looked for him, and we can just imagine that frantic feeling. The scripture passage in Luke tells us that they looked for three days. Of course, our minds immediately jump to another three days when Jesus was lost to the disciples and to the world. And there they find him in the temple. And his answer to Mary is a little bit abrupt. Why are you searching for me? Didn't you know where I would be? Which also echoes Jesus' question when the women are looking for their Lord on what we know as Easter morning. Jesus says, why are you looking for the living among the dead? So when Mary and Jesus find, or Joseph find Jesus, he's in that temple And he's listening to the rabbis, and he's talking with them. And the scripture tells us that actually he is making connections for them that they had not seen in the scriptures before. Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? So right away, Luke is telling us that this baby was born with a purpose, with a mission, And Jesus is telling his parents the same. I am right where I am supposed to be. I am about my father's business. And this is a look for us into Jesus' ministry and life, that it will be about his father's business. And so Mary's response also is such a human response, isn't it? Why did you do this to us, Jesus? Didn't you know? Why did you cause us such anxiety and such fear? But then Jesus goes back, even though he knew so much and was telling the rabbis those connections with Scripture and helping them to understand the Scriptures, he goes home with Mary and Joseph to learn more from them. And some scholars think that one of the reasons that we have this scripture passage recorded in Luke is that it highlights for us, Luke decided to write this down to remind us that Jesus, born in the manger, is fully divine, fully God. Jesus is completely God. But this story grounds Jesus as fully human as well and helps us to see Jesus as a a human being, as a little boy, and with his parents and living in community. And so it helps us understand that Jesus is both 
human and divine, fully human and fully divine. So this birth of this little baby Jesus is celebrated with all kinds of, for us in our day, celebrated so largely with all kinds of things that you can imagine, like candles, our Christmas trees, our gifts, our worship, and all of that. And we are reminded on this Sunday that he came for a reason and for a purpose to reconcile us with the Heavenly Father, to bring God's mercy closer to us. And what an amazing gift that is. So that begs another question. How do you receive gifts? Do you notice when you are gathered together as a family opening up gifts, people receive them in different ways. My husband has an aunt who insists that when we are all gathered together for Christmas, which doesn't happen very often, but when we are all gathered and it's the big, big family together, Yvonne insists that we open gifts in order of our age. And so the way she does this is the oldest person gets to open the gift first, which is kind of nice because it honors the, the elderly or the oldest in our family, which is nice. But you can imagine when all the cousins and all the aunts and uncles are together, when you're the two-year-old, <laughs> it is really hard to wait and receive your gift as the two-year-old. But as we do that, it's interesting because people do receive gifts very differently. Some people are like, oh, this is so great. You shouldn't have done this. And oh my goodness, this is too much. And other people are kind of like, hmm, and put it aside and go to the next one. And so I ask you today, how do you receive gifts? And what do you do with the gifts that you receive? As a young girl, I remember in my grandmother's house, um, they had, it's an old farmhouse, and they had built-in uh, drawers in one of the, in the dining room, and in the bottom drawer, there was a very special tablecloth. And my grandma would open it up once in a while, and that tablecloth was wrapped in plastic, and then, tish or, well, tissue paper first, and then put in a plastic bag. And then it was the only thing in that big drawer. And once in a while, she would take it out, and we would get to look at the tablecloth. <laughs> It was crocheted in this white thread, and her mother had made it and given it to her when she was first married. So it was a very, very special gift. But I don't ever remember, ever remember that tablecloth being on a table. Grandma would say, it's too special to be used. It's too special to take it out of that drawer and actually use it. Now, my grandma had a lot of grandkids, so I'm sure part of it was because <laughs> why would you want to take a white tablecloth out on Christmas? But it was very special for, to her, so special that she left it in a drawer, which is too bad because there it sat and it wasn't used, which is not why her mother made it. Her mother made it to be used. Her mother made it for her enjoyment as well. It was a beautiful gift, but it wasn't enjoyed at all. I mean, it well, was enjoyed, but it was not used. And gifts really are meant to be used. When you're the giver of the gift, it's so wonderful when you see, if you give a friend some earrings or a shirt, and the next time you see them, they're using it, they're wearing it. That does our hearts good. We feel like, okay, I got them something that they enjoyed and that they wanted. And so, when we are given gifts, we are expected to respond. And of course, it's the same way with the gift of Jesus. We are not to tuck him away in the manger and bring him out just once in a while. I love Paul's writing from this reading from Colossians when Paul says that we are to be clothed 
in Jesus. We put him on and we are clothed in him. And so he is a gift that comes into our lives and is integrated into our lives. A gift which changes who we are and how we are to live. So as Paul says, we are ones who live as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothed with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. We are ones who bear with one another, forgive one another, and as Paul says, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony so that the peace of Christ may dwell in our hearts forever. Amen. Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, you give us so many amazing gifts, and every day we are amazed at your abundance and your generosity. As we have celebrated the birth of your Son, help us to remember that as we receive this gift, it is a gift which is meant to be shared with others. Give you thanks for the gift of this place, where together we come and worship and share the good news, we sing your praises, and together we find the joy in the gift that is your Son, the gift of forgiveness and the gift of reconciliation and relationship with you, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Three. John says three. Verses one and three. Here we go. Together, our common Christian faith, we will use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
We pray for our youth director search team as they continue their search to find the one that you would have lead our youth at Zion. Gracious Lord, receive, merciful God, receive our prayer. All of these prayers and those that are on our hearts, we lift to you because we trust in your goodness and your mercy and we rejoice in your word made flesh among us. So we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This is your chance again. You get to tell us what you would like to sing, and not only which song, but how many verses, which verses you'd like to sing. Shout out a number and verse numbers. Which one? 267. 267? Joy to the world. How many verses shall we sing, Jimmy? Whatever you want. <laughs> I think this is a four-verse one, isn't it? Do you have four verses in your notes? How about another one? 283. Which one? 283. 283. You can please be seated if you'd like. Oh, well, come all you faithful. Well, I don't know. You can decide whether you want to stand for that one. <laughs> How many verses are we singing, Glenn? Let's go with all four. All four, okay. <laughs> you are singers today. We love that.
the next song? I know I heard a number, but I'm not sure what it is. 646. So that means you have to switch hymn books, folks. That means you have to look at the blue hymn book that's in your hymn rack. One, two, and five. The blue little one that's in your hymn racks. And you have to stand up again. No, 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 no they, don't have to, they don't have to march like the three kings. One, two, and five, I believe I heard, right? You've heard this. You've 
heard the story that Silent Night was a guitar song first because the organ broke in an old church. Is that right, John? We'll take that as the story. Beautiful way to end our worship service. Did you notice too? All those songs are the seven, were written in the 1700s and the 1800s. Think how many, how many years those have been sung together. Beautiful. Let's stand for our benediction. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. With all we are and all we do, we, we will trust, live, and serve Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus.